Hey folks, Nick Tucker here with the Historical Fencing Guild. Before we get into the program, I've got some bills to pay. So first and foremost, I want to put a big shout out to our primary sponsor, um, the Independent Creator Directory, NDCD.org, your one-stop shop for the best and the brightest authors, musicians, creatives. Basically, if you are looking to find the people you want to collaborate with, or you're looking to shop small, going there is a great place to find and discover new creators that you didn't know about. Um, my broadcasts are almost entirely made possible by the support of NDCD, so we are very happy to, to be a part of that process. And um, there is a link in the chat in the description where if you go there um, and you join as a creative looking for a place that's safe online to present yourself, I get a small portion of the fee that helps keep the... Uh, Again, keep the lights on, allows me to buy things like we're going to be talking about because I have a bit of an announcement, and then we can go on with stuff. But we're also made possible by sales of, uh, sorry, I had a minor delivery, so I have to sort things out. Whoop. And apparently I had a button go on strike. That was nearly embarrassing. Anyway, one second, because you guys don't need to see that much of me. Here we are. Uh, the Simple Sword, the Fighting Axe, and the Simple Spear. These are all part of my ongoing, yes, ongoing uh, series of Western martial arts manuals designed to help you go from having never handled the sword to being able to, to know enough that you can pass it on to others. Uh, the Simple Sword is sort of my magnum opus. Uh, it was the equivalent of my thesis as a sword master. Uh, at the time, I had done it after uh, 15 years of instruction, and now I've got 20-plus under my belt. And wow, yes, definitely. We're actually barreling fairly quickly towards the, uh, I think we're at the 6th anniversary? No, the 8th. Shoot. We are blasting towards the 10th anniversary of the Simple Sword, wherein I want to do something special. But... Um, I have other books, including my horror novel, Paints and Hellfire. So if you enjoy the way I present things and you want maybe somewhat occasionally comedic uh, horror set in the Appalachian Mountains, that's the place to go. Okay. Now, I know I seem a little meh than usual. That's because I have some good news. Now, one, and it comes from one of my uh, providers. I have an affiliate link, which is right here. If you go to woodenswords.com, that's Purple Heart Armory, and you go under this, you put this little part when you go down, it should track that you went in there, and hopefully if you go there to buy something, I should get, again, a small percentage of what you buy. It will cost you nothing extra. <coughs> helps me support this channel, and more importantly, helps them realize that the people that I talk to our clients and you know deserving of attention why does this matter well friends we're going to open up with a little bit of uh, um a minor announcement of something that's coming down the pipe because uh you guys like to know um what's going on as as long time viewers know i've been chasing one of these down for a very, very long time, uh, due in part due to the uh, measurements. Yeah, yes, this is allegedly a light longsword trainer for a six to eight year old. But the sizing is it is 36 inches long with a 26 inch blade and weighs one pound. So that means it has a 9.5 inch. Hilt. This is a very nice uh, bastard sword, arming sword for yours truly. And I've been after one of these forever. Now, <coughs> I've been telling you guys on, on uh, PHA, when he says, you know, email me when back in stock. Oh, wait, it is back in stock. So it's still there, and I just zapped the link. That's okay. Give me a second. I will return in just a moment. Bam. And we will go basic trainers. 
and I will simply scroll down. This is actually contrary to what the show, what they are showing is back in stock still. It just hasn't been updated on the site. The way you find that out usually is email me when this is back in stock. And you give them your information and they send it. I am incredibly excited to uh, have one of those on the way. But it does come with a slight conundrum. And the conundrum, unfortunately, is this. Uh, that item was $34.99 plus five for the uh, Paracord Purple, which I, I didn't change that, so that's probably what it's going to be. I may, for my own, do my own wrap because I have some grip tape of my own I prefer that costs a lot less than $15. Uh, but the shipping was $20 to get it from Texas to here. I think that might be a bit high, to be honest, but it is an odd shape, so it's one of those I will be looking into out of curiosity. I want to support small businesses whenever possible, and I want to support American businesses whenever possible. However, it can be hard and it can be quite challenging for um, those of us of a uh, financial place where we can't always do that when it is when you know different types of trainers can be found on Amazon. So give me just a moment to do this. Move tab to new window, move that over there so I can actually spend some time there. And we're going to go to our old buddy Amazon in just a second. Um, present. And then I'll, I'll go through your comments after I do this. I'm just trying not to lose where I was tracking. Okay. Now, this is not quite as nice as the, the, the uh, Katana trainer behind me. But I can't find those right now. I'm going to be digging through to see if I can find them. Still, it does appear to have a similar uh, sheath. And there are a large number of styles that could be found in a $35 price range with a 10% uh, off coupon. Uh, let me see. Is it showing? Yeah. So if I click this, it would knock another uh, three fifty off this, uh, three sixty off this, uh, the price of this. So that means I could have, for the same price, ordered essentially two of those. That's where it starts to be rough. And you could, as you prowl through, I am going to tell you guys a bit of a secret. And what I need to do is change my. Uh, setting for just a moment because you need to see the whole window and i am actually going to take this brand down if you are shopping for amazon now i got i originally got this as an extension to help with my research in book pricing uh there is an as extension for chrome you can get and it is called, does it show up? No, the, the pop-up doesn't show up for you. DS Amazon Quick View. But if I go here, it really, hmm. Okay, um, let me see something else. Because I'm having a setting issue. And what I want to do is share screen, entire screen. Uh, here we are. Okay, cool. Now, Amazon Quick View is free to download, and this extension I turn on, but it will tell you if there are uh, coupon codes available. It will tell you thing, give you access when you're shopping on Amazon to things like, let me back out for just a second. I want to, uh, there we go. How popular any uh, given item is in its sections. And you can look at the price history. 
So one way to verify at least popularity is by going to this number, which will give you, um, it, I believe it would be the item sales record. But this number up here will tell you that, okay, this item is 197 of all the, the, the thing, uh, uh, 1, 000, I'm sorry, 100, 67,000 whatever in sports and outdoor, but number 71 in martial arts practice swords. And what that'll do is tell you proper keywords to look for. It also has things like a price history. So if you are looking for swords, one thing I want to do is help you guys save as much money as possible. Yes, I know StreamYard is sharing that. No, I don't want to add a square ad. But I can check prices. I can set up price watches to see how an item is going to fluctuate. And I can track items long term to track whether this is a good deal or not. It, it, there are so many things that look very similar in training to, tools and swords where how is it you can go, okay, for popularity, for uh, overall quality, and that will tell you things like, okay, this is the looks like the Cold Steel Trainer. It is number three in martial arts swords. Or at least it was. But you can go back. Let me go back to the training swords. Give me a second. It's going to take a second to warm back up. Because it has to pull this extra information. Here we go. Martial arts practice swords. So you can go through and see the prices of what, as ranked at by martial arts practice swords, is selling the most. Because when you look at something like the Blades USA 34-inch uh, trainer over here, this is a very inexpensive sword. But if you look into it, you can find it or items much, uh, much more expensive or much less expensive by the different prices. So by using a tool like this extension, you can track and go, okay, these, these are the things that are moving. These are the things that are recommended. So this is the uh, katana with the sheath that's very much like mine. And it's la labeled at uh, 35. So yes, and so you can look at the store. This is a great way to start differentiating when you don't know between buyers of swords, you know, purveyors of, of swords or training swords as well, how high they're ranked. Now understand the price balance. This ranking is only in the number you know, of, of units sold at the given period. The, uh, the rating... Uh, which is your stars, is what's going to tell you the overall quality. And you want to find a place where these mix. So it doesn't matter what kind of trainer you're looking for. By using a tool like this, you can go through and uh, um, find not only the best-selling items, but you can find their price history. You can find their search were uh, terms, because sometimes finding the right uh, search engine things, the, the the terms, the keywords, that's what I'm looking for, will help you find items that it might be the exact same thing, but may have a radically different price. So. By being able to look into these, you can compare units, you can compare prices with or without shipping. Now I have Prime because obviously I ship a lot of things, but it it will help you compare uh, your your trainer tech, your uh, trainer stuff, your armor stuff, your uh, the books. 
let, let's say you want to get a copy of Musashi's Five Rings, okay? Let, let's try this. We're going to go real quick into... Uh, we'll say all departments, just so I'm not arguing. The Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Musashi. The, this is the exact same book, but you can find it through different translations, different prices, different bindings. So if you are... Well, look at this. The hardcover for Book of the Five Rings is only $5.99 right now. In hardcover... Um, frankly, that's insane, and I may just have to, um, <clears throat> uh, visit that, because a copy of that could work really well, or 39 cents on Kindle, but by having this information, you can see its, its ranks, its number, and you can try to figure it out. This looks like it's been around for a while, and they're they're marking it down. So by by using these tools, you can get the exact same material for yourselves, much much cheaper. Okay, so I am very pleased. I realize this is something that comes from my small business side, but it is something that uh, really is a good price. Hold on. I, I'm genuinely shocked that that is that with free delivery. Wow. I'm just, okay, I'm going to add that to my cart and I will just uh, deal with that later. But I just wanted to let that tool out because it could help you guys. I am insanely excited about having the, uh, Youth Training Sword to review. Uh, I think that it will help. Uh oh, and we're back. Did my net actually drop out? No. Oh, we're okay. We're just here. I am suffering some unstable internet. So if I start seeing it drop, I will cut out early in the uh, evening. But I want to make sure that I have the tools to discuss some of the future things that we need to do. But before we go into the next phase of what we're talking about tonight, I'm way behind in the chats and I want to get through that to, to make sure I'm caught up and there aren't any questions or anything. If you're watching this program either now or in the future, please, 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 please give me any questions or comments you have. I value them. If you value this kind of content, please like this. Um, unfortunately, due to the nature of, of my uh, the training I discuss and I do, um, the algorithm is levered pretty hard <gasps> against me. So you guys being able to get that out there and spread the word really, really helps. Now, um, first through the door, Cindy Kep, we're back. Hey, Cindy. Martial Arts and Tea, that's Thesis's YouTube channel, which tomorrow I believe he has a show talking about names. Um, I think you guys should be there if you can. Check out the historical... That is the link for this episode, which I find utterly delightful. Cindy likes to mess with time and space. She's a time lady. I think she may be a lost Romana, but don't tell her I said that. Uh, tune into the Historical Fencing and Guild, any other, and that's the link for this channel uh, at the youtube.com slash at the Historical Fencing Guild. Please! Theories, my friends, my beloved, um, please subscribe to this so you don't miss stuff. As the weather kicks up, so does this channel. I do admit for the next two weeks, I am going to be, oh, God, there goes my, my video again. Um, we have a major storm rolling at us, so I may have to cut the channel. Yeah. Okay, there's a good. There's a, a rather powerful breeze coming through, so we will see. Um, but 
That is the link for the channel. Please like, share, and subscribe to that. Cindy goes on to say, if it will let me. Okay. Things that go swishy, pokey, hacky, smacky. Amazon.com slash stores, Mr. Nicholas Talker. That is my Amazon bookstore where you can buy my books. And you can find my art at deviantart.com slash Nick T. I do take commissions on a case-by-case -case basis. The low end being $20 the high end being veritable. Uh, so, and sometimes that slides around depending on what you guys need. And, you know, my generosity at the moment. But uh, please feel free to, to uh, survey my works there or on my other YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash at Nicholas Tockert, where you can watch my morning show Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, never mind the Furthermore, War, a program I took over from the incomparable Brian K. Morris, where we help promote and support new authors and other creatives to help make what they do go. And if you want to support my efforts to teach people to be dangerously safe, consider joining the Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help me keep the lights on. Um, I, I give, as I am writing new manuals, you guys get inside stuff to that. It's due for a reboot. I made some attempted changes, and they uh, weren't approved, so I'll have to do some other things. But thank you, and thank you for the uh, support, Cindy. And good evening, all. Good evening, Trey. And everybody's saying hi, and hi, Thesis. And get cool stuff, woodensource.com, question mark, click, equals 1745. Now, I do, like I said, I have an affiliate link with uh, Purple Heart Armory. And we can go check their daily deals to see if there's anything I missed. I am excited for my uh, Utah friends because the images for the gins, the basic trainer gins are coming out, and they look very promising. Uh, there is no finer maker of custom trainers on the market right now than PHA. Now, let's see. Now Cindy's getting into you know, her, her martial accountability, if you were. Start practicing competition-type push hands. Fixed step. Today, I have assorted upper muscles in my upper arms and shoulders going, Oi! What the heck was that? Learning what is the response of what is a good kind of sore, meaning you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, versus um, what is a bad kind of sore, meaning you've hurt yourself, is something that we all have to adapt to as we age and as we engage in physical exchanges. Um, that can change dramatically. And I am really pleased to see uh, folks learning how to adjust that, admitting it's there, and just being as gentle with it themselves as possible. Because by going slow and gently, you will learn much quick, what much more quickly and much more effectively than if you try to rush your training in anything. So well done on you, Cindy. Uh, Thesis says, do not go to Amazon and things. search Tang Dynasty Jin. It will show you full Tang instead of what you wanted. Unfortunately, that's a case of a dominant uh, search keyword. The algorithm goes back. No, I am back. I disappeared for a week. Yes, you did. We were concerned about you, but we still talked to about you fondly, dear, and we are glad you are in the chat discussing uh, items and discussing, um, you know, what's available and, frankly, for being such a wonderful uh, promoter for me. And Foxy says, uh, and I am here. All right. Now, let me get set back up a little off screen. Uh, Cindy says, I didn't score many points yesterday, but I did learn some defensive moves and ways to deflect attacks. So victory. Yes, because when you're training, your goal is to learn. You can worry about winning later, but you want to learn so you can make it happen. I know my protection has changed. Go away. Okay. So give me just a moment. Bonk. File new. I want to set this up so that we can have basically a full-ish screen to do things on. And we'll go 
probably into the millipen because that works well at about 10, so it will be easy for you guys to see. And we'll stay here for a while. Now, we have been, in the last couple weeks, on what I am considering a refresher, where we are discussing for people coming back into the arts who've maybe neglected it, and uh, those who want, who've been asking me questions off, off the chat, such as what are our conventions and stuff, it's a good time to discuss that. But uh, Cindy says, not surprisingly, I am smaller than both of the prompts I practiced with. Both had so much reach on me, and the other is stronger and bigger. Something I'll have to get used to. On one side, it is a negative that you are not paired up by weight class. On the other, that will give you a tremendous um, experience boost versus those who only have been. Because learning how to deal with somebody who has significantly more... Sorry? Yeah, there's weather coming in. My ears are popping. Um, size and reach on you. is something you can't duplicate fighting somebody who is scaled to you. You have to be careful though. You can end up like me where I'm a little can I'm a little surprised when I'm fighting somebody smaller than myself. Um I forget that at 57 I am right around average. I'm not short because in the martial arts spheres that I participated in, especially the western martial arts, I am very much the small guy. And it kind of has affected my, my processing. And there's no one at my school at my level of my size. All three people who know the thing are taller and or bigger than me. And having tougher opponents will just make you stronger in the long run. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer in the more you sweat during practice, the stronger, the less you bleed in battle. And that's okay. I, if I can hold myself own against bigger folks, I should do okay at my size. Absolutely. So, what we're going to get into, I'm very proud of you, Cindy. Uh, let's see. What we're going to get into, and let me see how big I can make this comfortably. Give me a second. There we go. That'll do. I want to be able to access my tools. And let me put Cindy's comment away. Are, where, where do you want to... Uh, Focus on armoring, and what are our conventions? So we're going to go um, personal armor and HFG conventions. Now, to clarify convention, in this case, it does not mean, uh, let me do that. It does not mean a gathering where we can all talk because I'd love to have a historical fencing guild convention. I would love to be able to do something where we could all get together, possibly with uh, vendors related to martial arts and Western martial arts and other organizations to meet, to talk, to have panels, at demonstrations, etc. I like that. Cindy says, my teacher was funny last night. He told me who I'd be practicing with and then said, so don't get frustrated and don't get hurt. Wow, that sounds very familiar. Um, so I just want to make sure that you guys understand that in this case, conventions, wow, are agreed Whoops, my dyslexia got a hold of me. Sorry. Agreed upon rules. Okay. Understanding the conventions greatly affects what uh, defensive gear you wear. Okay. Because changes in convention will definitely change in the gear you want. 
This is something that I feel certain organizations have failed to properly appreciate. I'm just going to make this a big eraser because I should not need to uh, keep things light. So let's look at our conventions. What are our rules? Okay, first rule is going to be stay safe. Above all else, I want you guys safe. I want safety comes beyond uh, beyond effectiveness, beyond uh, stamina, beyond anything. I want you guys to stay safe. To work this, we have our you know touch calibration. Our goal when we are fighting, regardless of the style, is to have the control to, at full speed, in whatever technique we're using, to be able to make a light touch that is not going to harm anyone. Or as light as the style allows. Uh, Honorable calling of shots. What that means is if someone hits you, you need to call it. If you And that's why we work with a, so light a calibration, uh, at least to start. That is designed to help you feel all the hits, balance out. Oh, you, let's see, you've got yours. Be a nice human, control yourself, be aware of your situation, environment, hurting yourself or others is not desirable. Calibrate. These are. This is a great version. Um, I, do, I would say be a nice human, but right now it's it becomes more of some of the people I train with, especially on the field, frankly, aren't very nice um, by some definitions. Uh, the control yourself is what I see ca calibration is control of body, mind, oops, mind, and emotion. As are putting up with my sloppy handwriting. The reason, oops, the reason we have all that, why calibration of the body, mind, and emotion? I want, it's all one package. It all comes back to breathing. If you aren't controlled, you will be removed. If you are too scared, if you are too angry, if you are too distracted, um, if you aren't controlling, so if you're in a panic, I'm pulling you out. I'm, I'm, I'm calling a hold or a stop, and we do carry over the term hold. When a hold is called, everybody stops what they're doing, and their weapons go down unless they are in the process of immediately blocking a shot, okay? We say hold because somebody might say stop in conversation. Top one to hold is called. Yep. So why did the eraser get? Oh, I see what happened. Sorry. Go away. I do like the phrasing that's, that Cindy's using. It's just like I said, it's organized a little different. And I haven't gotten into the equipment-based stuff, but um, what we we have to work with two very radical uh, types of of uh, people. 
I either, it is very rare that I have someone come in who has, you know, a basic level of self-confidence, basic self, physically fit. Physically fit, physically fit. Anyway, this is a rare thing. Usually, we get somebody who um, either is uh, physically fit, but that should have been a U. There we go. Over responds. Or is physically challenged, limited, and or under response. So what, what do I mean by that? This is a little off the uh, the conventions, but it is talking about who you're targeting and how I approach the mentalities. You're usually going to have somebody somewhere on the spectrum. And if that's the case, okay, we'll, we'll start easy. We will start easy. And I think I'm going to make this slightly smaller in just a second, because it's just a little too big. Okay. There we go. Physically fit I'm confident. This is the person that it's the simplest and easiest to train um, because it, it just is a matter of assessment. Meant. Technique. Training. Sparring. So, yeah, that's sparring, sparring. There we go. Anyway. Okay. We're going to go through these things. And pardon my, ha my, uh, my handwriting. I know it's atrocious these days. This is the simple route to where we're going. And when, when we're dealing with that, whoops, that was a much bigger eraser than I wanted. So, let me see if I can't bring that back. I'm going to shrink my race down a bit, too. Let's go to here. Yeah, that gives me a little more control. There we go. Um, when we're dealing with somebody who's physically fit, I don't have to make adjustments for them, per se, other than the basic adjustments of making sure that their armor fits them, that their weapons are scaled to them, and that their technique hits their interest and... Uh, I don't want to put this. Their interest and their kind of personality. Okay. Now, when we have people who are physically fit, but um, we'll say have issues, we we adjust for. Uh, their training because you're you're going to split into either two trained this is your av these are the veterans I've worked with and that should be two trained uh 
These are the people who have been trained with a physical response to stimuli that when appropriate for uh, while appropriate for a combat zone are not appropriate for civil civil civilian living okay so what they have to learn to do is calibrate down to have graduated responses between not a threat and neutralize the threat okay um this can be worsened if they have something like PTSD, and my dyslexia got a hold of that too, or um, other other um, issues. But by going through what we do, we can teach them to calibrate down, control themselves. A lot of it becomes practicing, helping them realize when the switch is about to go, and then helping them breathe through it and understand that they don't have to respond that hard in this situation. And it's a type of control. It's giving them power over what they were trained to be. Okay. Um, a lot of it, believe it or not, is the elements of personal uh, sovereignty. Okay. Now the other side of it is, uh, People who um, their issues may be uh, from, yeah, and I flipped that upside down. Yes, folks, anyone who ever wondered if I am actually dyslexic and all that is getting a real treat because I'm having a very bad brain day for, you know, writing. The letters are trying to flip around on me. That happens sometimes. I could back out and hide it, but I'd rather you guys see that, yes, I play with my cards on the table, and sometimes things get flipped. But they may have a trauma, and I know that's not right, but that's close enough. And self-confidence issues. Issues. So... For someone like that, and Cindy is doing a wonderful job explaining teaching techniques and things in the chat, but if I get onto that, it's when you have two textbooks running parallel, they may not go in the same order, and that can really scramble things up. So I have to kind of hold, hold on that. The, comment, the commentary is brilliant. Please read it, but right now I have to stay focused on where I am, okay? These people have to be built up. They're going to need to be handled more gently. They're going to need more time. Uh, it may take them a while to develop the ability to be comfortable swinging a stick at their friends, be comfortable with someone swinging a stick at them. And this is where we, we pick the lightest, safest weapons. We go the slowest because... The, 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 the lightest approach here, ironically, and I'm going to put the, uh, I'm just going to say too much here and too little here because it really boils down to that. With conf with, with, the, uh, with the other crowd, with, with the excessively confident, sometimes you have to deal with uh, hierarchical thinking. You have to either through con conversing or um, demonstration, prove that you know something they don't. It can take a while. Um, with these guys, you have to you have to give them a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience. But given time, they can grow into it because this is them finding... their power, okay? Because their power may have been taken from them. 
um, a lot of my students have gone through extreme depression, um, extreme trauma. They've, they, uh, they're suicide survivors. They're sexual assault survivors. Um, it's incredibly common, unfortunately. So being able to understand that their needs are very different than these needs comes into play. Get that out of the way. I, I hope this makes sense. Now, this is all stuff that comes between, between the assessment and the technique phase. I, I need to figure all this stuff up in the assessment. And that's not technically the, the physical conventions I was talking about. Um, conventions are, for the purpose of this, the rules of play. And in this case, I get to do some drawing now. The whole body is a valid target. Okay. And I should have room because I'm scaled, but yeah, that's totally a foot. And that's foot. That's fine. It doesn't need to be perfect. From the tip of your nose to the tip of your toes, everything is a target. For our rules of play, the shoulder out to the hand, out to the wrist, loses arm if hit. Hand shots lose just the hand. Anything from the hip down, save for one special occurrence that we'll talk about, lose legs. We don't have hit points that we have to keep track of. We don't keep track of armor because the armor is not there to uh, be safe at high speed. It's to be safe when something goes wrong. It's a different mentality. I'll put this here too. because That's going to be my last one. All right. So you lose legs, which means either kneeling. Oh, wow. Kneeling, sitting, or resetting. My hand is really not doing what I'm telling it to do right now. So it's having a little fun. The reset is if you can't kneel, we count as a kill and we go back to what we're doing. Okay? No harm, no foul. If head, whoops, I lost my black again. One second. Head, neck, torso to the, if you think about the underwear line, to the A frame, like a sleeveless t shirt, that gives you about where it is. If you ever have a doubt, we choose the uh, more severe possibility. So if you're not sure if it hit you in the hand or the arm, if it's like right on the wrist, say you lost the arm, keep going. Because it's better for you to train from a position of weakness than to train from a position of strength. Now, this is our fencer or our swordsman or woman or whatever. From the side, because I want to talk about a couple things. Figuring any of this is a killing blow, right? Uh, we'll say fatal. Actually, it would go all the way down to there. There are... Uh, two major uh, areas 
that need to be counted. So a draw cut uh, blow or a thrust to the inside of the arm from about halfway down here to the armpit is fatal because of the way the arteries are set up. Likewise, for about a hand's width down the uh, inside leg, okay, this poor guy's having a bad day. You're going to have also fatal because we're simulating the loss of the femoral artery. I would rather have you guys train and think in terms of an injury being disabling so that you train more passionately to block it and I have the chance of possibly surviving it later than I would have you thinking you could blow it off and doing something stupid. I hope that makes sense to you. So for the purpose of targeting, the back is definitely open. In fact, I encourage back shots whenever you can get them on the field unless the opponent is showing something of uh, being in distress. The reason I say that is you need to learn to watch your back. And the only way you're going to learn to watch your back is if it's threatened. This is why we have headshots. I've worked with a lot of amp guard, um, can rack, a lot of the LARP groups where headshots for safety aren't allowed, they don't count, and so many of them have learned to lead with their face because it's a it's essentially a shield, and that is such a dangerous bad habit. I can't condone it. I, it has gotten better in recent years, but it does matter. So, what type of gear? Do we need going down the body and I'm going to redraw the body once again for you guys. My pen's back. Okay. And I'm just going to draw. Once someone is in armor, they are remarkably neutral. Okay, in that it becomes very hard to tell gender unless, you know, things are accentuated. So we're not going to really genderize our armoring standards very much at all. Okay. And yes, this is sloppy, but it proves the point. Head protection. This is going to be a 350 Newton or more, preferably more, fencing mask. Neck. A gorget. That's how I learned to say it. That's how I will say it. A gorget, one moment, needs to cover the entirety of your neck from just under your chin, back here, preferably interfering with shots to the, the soft part under your chin, all the way down to about where your uh, clavicle sits. Because we want to keep your Adam's apple, your throat, your larynx uh, protected. We want to make sure that your uh, our veins and arteries aren't uh, under uh, weak under assault. And we want the top seven vertebrae or so, the cervical vertebrae on the back of your neck to be protected against possible assault. Optimally, we want to drape or head cover or something to pad the back of the mask. However, that can be a bit of a trade-off with heat and availability is still dicey. So that's something that 
is I consider optimal. Um, going down, plastron. A plastron is just a chess piece. Uh, interesting about the gorget, the local hemo group is only requiring protection for the trachea in the gorget. That is very uh, common. I really prefer that there is some cervical protection. And see, that's where we're going to get, this is a great question. The, the 300 Newton is not the shirt. The 350 Newton is the 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 uh the force that the mask can absorb. Okay. The force that the mask can absorb. And what I am listing off is the bare minimum. Okay. And this is for general use. It changes with other gear. I want a chest piece that at least protects your sternum, preferably lower. These are things I'm sensitive. I've been severely gapped. And, and see, okay, if they have, if, if they are protecting it with another device, then it's protected. Um, because many of us don't have the back of head and neck insert, um, now, most fencing groups who are using steel require a 350 Newton shirt. Now, this is... Okay, my, my net's cutting in now. So this is very interesting because that is meant to stop. And the way, that comes from stopping a broken blade, it, usually in foil or epee or sa saber. And we have to remember that a, a modern fencing saber has little to do with the historical military saber. Because we are fighting with uh, the plastics, I am working on tweaking, and it is an evolutionary thing that changes as we are uh, fighting. But this is the minimum. So I want I want to put min minimum. Okay, minimum. I wear a lot more than this. The problem is. If you are gearing your protection against a broken blade, a sharp impact, a sharp force trauma, that does little to negate blunt force trauma. I wore a ballistic nylon. It could pass any punch test they wanted to throw at it, but it still was a little thin layer of fabric. That uh, Okay, yes, um, th those shirts are usually meant to stop a broken blade, but they do little to stop the force. That's why I'm saying a plastron as a very primary thing. Yes, you mentioned that, and that's terrifying, because that tells me they haven't been taught developing an S in the foible. It tells me they have not been trained to maintain their gear. But, Moving down the body, moving out down the body, then we'll go out from the core. Um, groin protection. And I want to comment on the plastron and the groin protection. Because um, one thing I am passionate about is the subject of cancer, especially breast cancer. I train with a lot of females. And I am saying it that way because some of the people I've trained with have been, frankly, biologically female, whether they identify as female or not. So it can get complicated in terminology, but they still possess um, enhanced mammary glands. We'll put it that way. And um, there is a, a, it's been scientifically proven that repeated blows to the breast can cause 
breast cancer. It raises the uh, likelihood of it. So we want to make sure that there is proper breast protection in women, regardless of cup size. That is not a matter. They have to be protected. It has to be a single piece. The reason is, if you get, they used to sell them, and it, you don't see them often, but I still have to talk about it. Um, there were dish-shaped breast protectors that you just stitch on. And the problem is with two dish-shaped pieces of plastic, the right set of compression from, from your guard and a shot could cause a C-sif, a, 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 a scissoring, scissor effect. And yes, exactly. That's why I'm saying a full, full single piece plastron, preferably molded to your shape. Now, this may be in plastic. This may be in metal. This may be in HDPE. This may be in rigid leather. But um, I have seen the aftermath of uh, a female fencer who uh, had a scissor kind of literally bite a chunk off. You don't want that. One thing I, I was appalled by was the fact that my beloved wife would come off the field in her heavy armor and have what they called armor bites where the buckles dug in and caused severe bruising and injury and bleeding in places. That's horrible armoring. Don't let anyone ever convince you that that's normal or right. That means you're not wearing a, a, enough protective material under it. So if you're using that kind of impact and that kind of force, you want a padded gambeson, hard over soft. This is a very different style of armoring. And we need to we need to keep that in mind. But um going back to where I was. Groin protection. At minimum, and this is minimum again. Leather gloves. I prefer padded gloves. I prefer gauntlets. A uh, hockey gloves, lacrosse gloves. Um, if you have the money, there's some glorious assorted gauntlets that can be had. The best if you are going harder scale. So we're doing spear work or um, a more aggressive pole arm or something like that. You're going to want clamshell style because a clamshell is going to arc over the hand and the force, the armor will not impact the hand. It, the, the, the armor will impact the haft of the weapon, transferring the force to the weapon and not into your little fragile finger bones. That is called good armoring. Close toe fitted shoes or boots. The legs you want some fabric. There should not be optimally bare skin, especially if we are, are dealing with new people. Now, I have been fighting for 20 years. I spar with people I've known for that much time or longer. Occasionally, you will see me go in much lighter gear than this because we are exceptionally well-trained. And that, that is absolutely a foil thing. So you're actually getting into a great point. This is the minimum, and this is the generic. If we are fight, fighting and we are worried, you know, both parties are fighting foil, and that's one thing we have to talk about. Like fights like steel does not I do that and that fight plastic, okay? Live steel
never, ever, 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 ever fights. To the point, folks, you have to understand, I wear my neck knife with nearly religious fervor. It's on backwards. That's why it was bugging me. But when I am on the field, this is not on me. And the reason Live Steel doesn't fight on the field is, one, it's never a good idea. Two, in a pit point of, arm, of anger, somebody could get stupid and do something they'd regret for the rest of their life. Three, it could get tangled wherever it is and uh, get deployed. This is why no live steel, no live firearms. Live steel may be present at a practice for throwing or archery, but that is not hitting the uh, list field. Never. Okay? If you want to try swinging your live steel sword around, Unless we are set up to do cuts to, and only cuts, which very, very rarely happen, that never plays. But from from Cindy, Cindy's perspective, if we are fighting what I consider light fencing, uh, being um, foil, epee, or we'll say we're going to put Olympic Saber. You're going to fight light fencing gear. That means uh, white leather gloves, a mask, gorget may or may not be optional depending on the jacket you're wearing. Nothing that's going to break a blade. Nothing that's going to snag a blade. Um, that sort of thing. Okay? Fencing. Heavy. Are things like You know, practical rapier blades, bloggers, um, some musketeer blades, and that is a a maker-by-maker uh, maker thing. That means we're if we're doing that we're going by the um, SCA mid realm uh, rapier rule conventions as best as we can. Okay, puncture resistant and then added with the plastron and the padding, um, pre preferably and while I said minimum, I want your joints protected. Your elbow cops, knee cops, things like that. There are different guards that can catch blades. We have to be ever vigilant for that. If a blade is caught, a hold is called, and we physically untangle it, especially with either of these. Now, if we are fighting what we'll call uh, HEMA for our you know, for video discussion purposes, uh, plastics. Uh, this is going to be your PHA basics, your nylon, uh, possibly cold steel, again, poly. This is our bread and butter. Okay, this is where we live most of the time. Polypropylene, so hold on. 
Lean. Okay. There, that is where we live the vast majority of time. Okay. We don't fight. These guys don't fight each other. These guys don't fight each other. Everything fights in a weight class. Um, okay. Ah, great, great question. What are your thoughts on pistol grips? The SCA forbid them even for disability uh, accommodations. Um, they can take a very long walk off of a short pier, being the SCA in this case. I have no problem with pistol grips being used in either heavy or light fencing, provided you are trained in how to use them and that you are um, able to use them. In space of accommodations, we will always work toward the accommodation, not away from the accommodation. Okay? Um, the other category that I need to put down is heavy. And that is reserved for rattan, which is basically SCA heavy. Right. We will use SCA heavy style standards for that. And um, yes, that's it's it. That is where they are fixating on the historical aspect of things. Um, while pistol grips weren't, period, there were adaptive grips, um, curved grips, grips with spurs. They existed. Because if you could grab it and make a shape simple enough to hold, somebody probably did it. And again, for the purpose of comfort and, uh, and hi, some person. Good to see you. For the purpose of comfort and uh, safety, absolutely, I have no problem with pistol grips, at least in the light fencing, heavy fencing. I have yet to see a HEMA plastic grade weapon with a pistol grip, um, at which point I would have to inspect it myself for uh, safety. There are some rules for all of these. Okay, so there are some rules that we have to talk about for all of this. And let me just clear the board for a second. Again, part of my handwriting, I'm having a very, very bad hand day. And I am switching through brushes trying to find what will work easiest. Okay, first off. Each. Fight. Go over, you're going to do a heavy inspection during, uh, at the beginning. Everything gets looked over at the beginning, everything gets looked over at the end. Heavy. But, for me, for the guild, you take a second and you give your, your, your uh, we weapons a once over. You have your opponent give your armor a once-over to make sure everything is strapped, everything's in place, or an assistant. We're all friends here. Or, you know, whoever's watching the fight. We always stop and look. Okay. Nothing fragile. Or sharp. I actually had an SCA uh, Warder of the Bronze Ring, which at the time was as the highest you could get in the Middle Kingdom, throw a full-on conniption fit and threaten my life over the fact that I refused to fight him when he was fighting. An L one of his swords had an L Sid rig that had a spike. A like pencil style conical spike. So it kind of went like this, and it had it was like a very 
minimal swept tilt that curled around and it had a spike. And I said, I'm sorry, I, I'll either forfeit the fight, but I am not fighting you with a spiked weapon. So if this is the handle, it has a, a bit of a guard and this conical spike. I'm like, no. So for safety, that counts as a uh, live steal. And at, see, Cindy says here, hold on, let me find where my, my cursor is, which I could understand double queens could catch a blade. So can swept the, so can swept tilts. Sword breakers. And basically any guard with a 90 degree catch a la um a sigh. So if we go here, we go here, straight up and down. Could catch and break the sword. And you see, I hear what you're saying, but a friend of mine had a cloak with a metal uh, cloak pin. The cloak was huge by the time the pin was buried. Ow! Yes, nothing sharp. Oh. No. I'm going to tell you no um, because the reason that that could happen is it is very easy to get a stray shot to the palm. It is very easy for his grip to slide. And then he has a uh, inch or two inch long needle that could go into somebody. Um, if it didn't wrap right. Okay, he's got it you know, gripped in his grip. If you guys stumble into each other, your hands reflexively will come out like this. There are a lot of uh, variations where something like a cloak clasp, a cloak pin could be violently accidentally used because I've seen manuals and discussions with people on how they may have been deliberately used in defense. And see, okay, and I'm not trying to, to harp. I hope I don't sound too aggressive. But uh, that's why... The other thing is, unfortunately, rules are not in place for the people who are sane and, and would follow them. That's one thing you need to understand. Um, it's like, okay, let's put it this way. The speed limit. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. Aside from the fact that they are used to um, raise revenue for uh, towns and stuff. Excluding that, the vast majority of us in all, all don't need a speed limit. We would drive a safe speed. Oh, it's raining. I will slow down to allow for my braking. Oh, it's icy. I will slow down or stay off the road. Oh, it's foggy. I'll turn on my, my, my lights and slow down. And you, know, you say it right. Rules are for goober heads. So unfortunately, we have to assess the implication of rules for goober heads, as you put it, because one, goober heads need them, and two, at any point due to heat exhaustion, um, a bad day, you know, any number of interpersonal things, we could all become goober heads. Anybody could have a bad day. So the rules have to be in place for that. Now, I can train with certain people with significantly less because we're both highly experienced. Should I? No. 
But could I? Yes. And in rare occasions, that does occur. But we still would, would never fight with something actually sharp. You get what I'm saying? So we need to keep this out. Now, I've gone just under an hour and a half. And the next part I want to get into is defensive items. Because Cindy has kind of given me this great parlay right into, a uh, great segue, that is, uh, into defensive items. But I think we're going to try that for next week because my throat is starting to hurt. And judging by my handwriting and uh, some of the malaprops, And you know what? In some cases, with the right with the right weapons grade stuff and the right uh, calibration, it can be uh, quite safe for, frankly, professionals. People have been doing it for a very long time. But that's not fair to the newbies. They want to play like we do. So it's usually not done because you want to set a good example. There are exceptions. And um, for the purpose of demonstration, sometimes, especially if I have a, a colleague I'm demonstrating with, things may get a little different. But we're going to talk about defensive weapons. And uh, I get choreography, but not freestyle. Fair. Um, when I'm doing it like that, I'm usually doing half to quarter speed. So very controlled, very slow. And the reason we have masks and things off is to better communicate. So it's that's one of the things I weigh when I evaluate somebody. Is are they actually able to fight actually slow? And slow-mo work your way through. Now I've had some people go, oh, you're you're not fighting slow. Yes. Yes, we are. Let us armor up and we'll show you what not slow looks like. And then it's ting, 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 ting. And it's a different experience. Also, temperature can be a variant. There are times where it is so hot, the heat is more dangerous than the gear. And yes, uh, we will get into rigid and non-rigid parries next week. Please, someone remind me about that so I don't miss that. Um, but with that, guys, I want to thank you for a lovely show. I do need to get some blood sugar in me, and I do need to, to drink the majority of this bottle in the next few minutes um, just because of how warm it's gotten in here. Thank you for a lively and educated chat. I know I had to step back from it, but I'm, I want to thank you guys for, as always, supporting me helping us do what we do here. Um, with that, I will review that longsword, the youth longsword trainer as soon as it comes in. I've been trying to get one originally for Xander when he was a youth. Now he's six foot tall, so he's taller than me. But we're going to see how much I like that sword because I feel I'm going to have opinions. That being said, guys, keep your eyes open. Do your drills. Be kind to yourself and each other. And as always, thank you for supporting your local Swordmaster. I will be back next week for another episode of the Historical Fencing Guild live stream. And once I am done in two weeks from now, after I've gone through the convention, April 13th, that I will be at, um, I will be stepping back from the stuff I've had to do for convention prep. So that's kind of keeping me busy now. And I'll be able to work more on... Uh, guild stuff, and um, some game design stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. I will see you all very soon. Toodles, folks.